संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए पूरन पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुदा कल्प तरु पारस चिंता मनि चार संत समान ते एक नहीं मैं मन मा करो विचार संत समान ते एक नहीं मैं मन मा करो विचार हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे घनश्याम महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम अलमाइडी our beloved Bhagwan Swami Narayan, <coughs> Pujipad Guruji, Pujya Santo, and all of you beloved devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Today I want to start out with the hypothetical for all of you. So, suppose you have a twin b brother or twin sister. And both of you are juniors in high school, 11th grade of high school. What does that mean? SATs, of course. SATs are exams that you need in order to enter into a valid and good college or university, whichever one you select. So obviously, everyone studies that year, or many, many study beforehand starting from high school, ninth grade, 10th grade, just to get a decent or good score in the SATs for college entrance. So you take the whole process, your parents send both of you in those Kaplan classes. So both of you enroll and you take the classes two months ahead from the exam. Every Saturday you go, for five hours and you take the classes you study for the classes you study for the SATs and you successfully pass that Kaplan classes <clears throat> it's the day of your exam that Saturday in the morning obviously you're a little nervous but you have confidence that you've taken those Kaplan classes so there's no worries. You know that you're going to do good. And your twin brother also knows that he's going to do good because of those classes, because of your preparation. So you go in boldly and confidently, take the exam, you and your brother, the five, six hour process, and you come out with a smile. Your brother also is smiling. And both of you know that you've done well. So, now it's the anticipation of when your score is going to come. It's gonna come in the mail, they've told you. It'll take about six to eight weeks. So, after you take the exams, you start preparing for your final exams in school because it's almost the end of the year and you prepare and you focus on your studies in school. You don't even know it. And it's been seven weeks. You check the mail. You see two letters from the SATs. You go in excitingly into your home. You give your mail, or you give your brother's mail to him, and you take your envelope in your hand. You call your parents over. They're excited as well because they know this is a big deal. They know that this depends on a lot of things. This depends on what kind of or how good of a college you'll get into and obviously the fee that they'll, be ha they'll have to pay if you stay in state or go out of state due to the expenses of boarding, lodging. They obviously want you to stay close to home that's just an excuse because you know that they know that if you go out of state or if you go far away, they'll have to pay for the boarding, lodging, food, etc. 
But if you commute, obviously that's going to save them a little bit of money. So they're obviously anticipating that you get a good enough score and select a college or university nearby your home. <clears throat> so you accidentally open the envelope. Your brother opens it at the same time. And you look at the different scores and then you look at the total. So right then and there, you're not ecstatic, but you're at a mediocre pace. You're like, this is okay. So what you do, you're smart. You ask your twin brother first, what'd you get? Reveal, reveal it to all of us. So your twin brother obviously opens it and says at the bottom, he got, he got an 1800. Your parents are ecstatic. They're very happy for him. So after they do their mini celebration in the corner, they turn to you and they're excited towards you and they're like, come on, open it, let me see it. So you look at the score and now you have a frown. Before you were at an even level, not so happy, not so sad. After your brother revealed his score of 1800, you frown. Why? Because you got a 1600. Just 200 points <clears throat> short from matching him. Right there, your parents, because they're your parents, they put your hand, put their hand over your head, tell, tell you that you did a good job as well, but it's not as big as a celebration that you just saw and witnessed a couple, sense, a couple seconds back with your twin brother because they know it that your twin brother has done better and also the fee that they've been paying for those Kaplan ca classes paid off. Also, both of you had the colleges that you wanted to go to selected, and <clears throat> due to your low score, you write there and know that you're not going to get into the college you selected, but your twin brother, he got into the college. So again, your parents are ecstatic, and they decide to throw a party for both of you, but you know it's for more for him than yourself. So you still are okay with it. Yet, in your mind, <clears throat> very, very minute thoughts start to rise. Thoughts that you're not so familiar with, but thoughts that are kind of driving you away from your twin brother. You don't know what it is yet, but it's coming slowly. But you know it's not good. You don't even know it. And now every time you see your twin brother, or every time he comes to you for a question, or any kind of engagement, you kind of give him a short answer, kind of ignore him and walk away. Your brother also notices this, but he doesn't say anything because he knows he's got that 1800 over your 1600. So he knows that there's some kind of tension in between both of you. Also, your parents, when they throw that party, in that party, more of your relatives are invited and your close family friends, and all the attention is given to your twin brother over you. So there again, now you start to get real malicious thoughts that he doesn't deserve it. He didn't study as hard as me. Me and him both took the clap Kaplan classes. He doesn't deserve it. I'm a better candidate. I'm always the favorite in my family. And again, why is he now the favorite. <clears throat> so then you wonder and wonder 
and you start to develop a negativity towards your brother. Time goes on, and now there's a distance. Every time he walks into a room, you exit. Every time you walk into a room and you see him, you again turn around and go away. This happens for a short period of time, but it's a disturbance. Stop right there. You're probably thinking what it is. Was it, what is this disturbance? Let me tell you something. It's called jealousy. The example I gave you is a perfect example of situations that we get into with our family, friends, or any kind of social life matters where something small like this occurs and we develop jealousy towards the other person. Now, what the true thing or what the right way to do is to actually get or observe the attribute of that person. Right there, when you found out that your brother got an 1800 on the SAT scores and you got a 1600, just 200 points below, when your parents were celebrating with him, you should have also joined that celebration. If you were not a jealous person, you would have joined that celebration right away. But since there was some jealousy, you kept distance and you waited until your parents and your brother again focused on you. This is a perfect example that shows us that jealousy is something that's part of our life and we don't even know it. You're probably wondering, well, this is one incident but is there more? Sure, it can happen any time. It's something, remember I told you, tiny, tiny thoughts start to occur in your mind. And then you develop that full jealousy. And due to that, you feel miserable. Due to that, you can't engage or you can't function properly. Not only as a devotee of Bhagwan but also as a student or as a family member, in short. So, today our topic is jealousy. According to the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan's own words, own words, Saranpur 8 chapter, there is a question asked, what is the characteristic of jealousy? Well, the exact meaning that Bhagwan shows us, gives us, states to us is one cannot bear to see even someone greater than oneself being honored. This is the exact definition of jealousy. Obviously what we saw completely matches this and what we can probably witness in our life, we can probably tell that I developed jealousy at this point. How? What is the meter? Well, when someone else greater than oneself is being honored, you can't stand it. You can't stand being there. You can't stand even listening to those words. Someone greater. But also, Sriji Maharaj goes on. Right after he says, a person who is extremely jealous cannot bear to see anyone. Anyone meaning not older, not younger, not greater, cannot bear to see anyone being honored. Now this is the full form of jealousy. And we just experienced a hypothetical situation that happens practically in modern life as of right now. But this nature, this vile nature occurs everywhere, anytime, any place. And the place we want to go to right now, the time we want to enter, is back in time, 200 years ago. There is a devotee by the name of Jiva Kachar. <clears throat> Bhagwan stayed in Garuda, the village of Dada Kachar, the kingdom of Dada Kachar, 
for 29 years of his life. And there, there was a devotee by the name of Jivakachar. Now, Jivakachar was a pleasant devotee. He served, he did everything. Actually, what he used to do was, there was from the darbar, meaning from the courtyard, from the kingdom or from the home of Dada Kachar, there was a pathway to go to the Gela River. Gela River is a river where Bhagwan and his saints and his devotees used to bathe in in the morning. Now that pathway, it used to be full of rocks, sharp rocks, you can say cactus pines, any kind of sharp objects. There was always some kind of brittle there. So what Jiva Kachar did, just look at his seva. What he did was every morning he would wake up early. Him and his wife would sweep the whole pathway from Dada Kachar's Durbar to the Gela River. So that Santos, Maharaj, devotees who went to go take snan, who went to go take a bath there, would not become hurt on their feet. So that was his sensitivity. That was his emotion. And every morning they did this, both husband and wife. But at one time, Jiva Kachar was sitting in the assembly, Dada Kachar was sitting, other devotees were sitting, female, male devotees were sitting, Santos were sitting as well. And at one time, Sriji Maharaj praised Dada Kachar very much so over for his seva, for his surrendership nature, for his samarpan bhav, you can say. Right there and then, Jiva Kachar became disturbed in his heart. Why? Because he became jealous. How? Because he thought to himself that every morning I'm waking up this early to sweep the pathway. By the way, he woke up probably at 4 a.m. in the morning. So when Bhagwan and Santos would wake up at 5 a.m., they could come and take a bath. 4 a.m. in the morning, he would sweep for one hour. So the pathway is clear. Yet, when Sriji Maharaj did not praise Jiva Kachar and praise Dada Kachar in the assembly, Jiva Kachar had thoughts of killing Bhagwan Swaminarayan in that time. This was all because of jealousy. Jealousy is one part, but the main part was egotism. He had ego that I am better than Dada Kachar. Why is he only praising Dada Kachar? Dada Kachar does not sweep, wake up 4 a.m. in the morning and sweep the way like I do. Then why is he praising him? This was a question that arose in his mind. So he decided to kill Bhagwan Swami Nain. What he did was he hired a person and bribed him with land and money. His name was Ram Kachar. He bribed him with land and money and told him to hide in one of the bathrooms, at nighttime, Bhagwan had a uh, habit of going to the bathroom. So, Jiva Kachar told Ram Kachar to hide in one of the bathrooms there and wait until Sri Maharaj comes, take a sword and cut his head off. Ram Kachar was obviously very, very greedy. So, the money and land, he could not resist this. And he had no value or he did not understand the glory of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So he was completely influenced by this bribe. So he went and he hid inside the bathroom at the particular time that Jiva Kachar told him. Because Jiva Kachar knew Bhagwan's schedule very much. So he hid and Bhagwan woke up at his usual night time. 2 a.m. in the morning. And Bhagwan right away knew that there's something different. He right away knew the whole plot, plan of Jiva Kachar. Because obviously, he's omniscient. He knows everything. So, what Bhagwan did was this time, he took Bhaguji. Bhaguji was the bodyguard of Bhagwan. So he took Bhaguji and he told Bhaguji to take his sword 
and walk in front of Shriji Maharaj and guide him to the bathroom area. So both Bhaguji and Shriji Maharaj went. And what he commanded Bhaguji would, what to do was open the door of the bathroom and hold the land, lamp up and see if anyone's inside. Obviously, Bhaguji's thinking, who would be there at the nighttime? No one would be there. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. No one's ever there. Also, Bhagwan never calls me. And why did he call me today? That's probably a question that arises. Yeah, Bhaguji ignored everything and did as Bhagwan said. So he opened the door slowly. And right there, he saw and spotted Ram Khachar. He took him out, started beating him, and took him to Sriji Maharaj. Sriji Maharaj interrogated Ram Khachar, bombarded him with questions. Who sent you? Why are you here with a sword? What are you doing? Ram Khachar explained everything because he was very scared of Bhaguji. Ram Khachar told Sriji Maharaj that I was bribed by Jiva Khachar for land and money, this much land, this much money, to cut your head off when you entered the bathroom. He had told me the time exactly you would wake up, so I've been hiding here for half an hour. Everything was explained, and Bhagwan Swaminarayan found out everything. Now, the story is long. We don't have too much time, but we just want to take this incident. This incident, what made Jiva Kachar decide to kill Sriji Maharaj? Number one, egotism. Number two, jealousy. In the Vachramrut, in the same Vachramrut, Sarangpur 8 chapter, Bhagwan himself says that when a person has anger or jealousy, these are all branches of egotism. Egotism is the main root. And from that main root, branches like anger, branches like jealousy all sprout. So, the mood, meaning the main root of even this vicious nature, jealousy, is egotism. So due to Jiva Khachar's ego, he also decided to kill Sriji Maharaj, Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself. What should we learn from this? What message? Well, first and foremost, in the Vachramrit, Gadara, first chapter, fourth Vachramrit, Bhagwan says, one should not be jealous. But Anandan Swami again counters and says, what if someone is jealous? Well, Bhagwan teaches his devotees, if you are jealous, then imbibe the virtue of the person you are jealous of. But do not take the negative of that person. Do not misguide yourself and think negative thoughts of him and become jealous like that. So there's also ways to become jealous, you can say. The topic is jealousy, yet it has so much depth inside that it's very, very hard to spot. Even a devotee, you can say, in the time of 200 years ago, in the presence of Sriji Maharaj, who had the darshan of Sriji Maharaj, his 500 Paramahansas, his great devotee, such a person had a thought of killing Bhagwan himself, then who are we to judge that we would not get thoughts of jealousy towards another person that is being honored, who is greater than us or who is equal to us if one has extreme jealousy? So, today's lecture is to open one's eyes that sure, these kinds of incidents do or will occur in our life. It's not like you can avoid it. But what we can do is we can recognize this. And instead of taking the negative point, let's go back to that hypothetical. Instead of looking at your brother's negative point, you should have thought at that time that he studied harder than myself. Due to that, he got a better SAT score. So... He is greater than myself because he studied harder than me. That's it, right there. If one had that thought at that time, then there would be no doubt of jealousy even occurring.
because you observe the quality of such a person that is in front of you. So, spotting it, identifying it is one thing. After identifying, eradicating it, destroying it, taking, out, taking it out is a second thing. But just like how a doctor gives medicine to a patient, in the same way, Bhagwan is giving us medicine and teaching us that if one wants to completely, you can't say destroy, but at least avoid going into the cave of jealousy, going into the pit of jealousy, at that time, when you see that someone greater than you is being honored, then do not feel jealous. Think of his good quality or think of her good quality. And due to that, your jealousy will not occur. This is Bhagwan Swaminarayan's words. These are not my words. According to, you can read Gadada 1st chapter 4th Vachramrut and Sarangpur 8th Vachramrut also states this. And due to that, you'll find out that if you apply Bhagwan Swamiran's formula, then you would never develop any kind of, you can say, erosion in your heart or any kind of, you can say, emptiness in your heart. And you'll always feel peaceful at heart and you'll be able to please Bhagwan and you'll be able to please Santo and Devotee. So this is my request to all of you. Small announcement. Yutsi Beer 2014 is about a month and a half away here in Loyadam NJ. We're celebrating it in between Murti Pratishta Mahotso, which is from <clears throat> July 28th to August 3rd. Our sea beer is from July 30, 31, and August 1st. I encourage all of you to register. If you haven't, on the website, theswaminarayan.org, you can also find out information on the PDF that's attached there. And please let us know if you have any questions. The email is there, and the contact information is all there. Thank you. And also, now we want to go to Pujya Rushi Swami's lecture. So please listen to his lecture attentively. Hare Krishna Maharaj Nijay. Varnivesha Ramani Adarsanam Mandaha Saruchirananam Bujam Pujitam Suranaro Tamir Muda Dharmananda Namaham Vichintahi Sri Hari Krishna Maharajani Jay Almighty Supreme Lord Bhagwan Swami Narayan Or Pujya Guruji, all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Today I have a question. From tomorrow, I was thinking over the question, but the question is unanswered. So let me ask you the same question. Perhaps I have an answer from you. My question is, whether the wooden block can drown in the water or not. And the second question is that a stone can float in the water or not. Is it possible? 
most of you immediately says that stone cannot float in the water and a wooden block always float in the water it never can drown in the water but it is this is possible in some in some per- perspective or in some phenomenon i have observed stone may float in the water as well as a wooden block may drown in the water how is it possible you may ask it is only due to company in the world there are so many vicious nature people just as an example in the time of sri ji maharaj there are many vicious persons like joban pagi munjo suro and many others but they can also live and lead spiritual life they are like a stone but still they can't float in the water on the other hand there are many virtuous person but still they can also drown they can also lapse from the path of liberation just as azamil azamil was not previously a vicious person he was a brahmin who was a virtuous person who always performed all the vedic ceremonies but still due to bad company even though he was like a wood or wooden block still he cannot float in the water he cannot walk on the path of liberation no doubt after changing the company at the point of his death turning point came into his life and so due to a good company he can change his death this is this is what all happens due to company and that is why we have listened many times that company company decide our direction it is not our and it is not our endorsement and viewers it is not our practice it is not our any personal hard work but it is only our company is liable for changing our future changing our present our past is not in our hand but our present is is in our hand so if we keep a good company we can have a good future in our hand whether we believe it or not that stone can float in the water or not but before 200 years gunadithan and swami says this example in his talks swami says if 1 kilo of wood is bound to 10 kilos of stones even the wood is drawn and if 1 kilo of stones is bound to 10 kilos of wood even the stone floats similarly there is a difference in company so this is happen only and only due to company one keeps and that is why a person is known by his company if even a thief can 
a thief have company of a saint after some times that thief totally change thief will change into a devotee of bhagwan so even though a person is thief but still he is known as a devotee from the perspective of perspective of worldly people but we have no concern with this example of thief just consider our own self as a devotee of god no doubt we have a good company in satsang but still out of the temple out of the from out of the contact of sadhu or devotee we have much more contact throughout the day whether we are in the school or college whether we are on class or on tour if we have finished our study we have on different types of company on our job in our offices whether we are child or whether we are old age people we all have different kinds kinds of company throughout the day we have to meet different types of people at the time if we have a little bit intellect to think for our own benefit we should immediately think if i keep a company of this person is it beneficial for my own self or not whenever we encounter a bad company we should first recognize this is not good for me if this is not good for me then just start to try how early i forsake this i how early i can remove myself from the company of such person and whenever we have a good company always attached by heart but the question arise how can we understand whether the person or persons or groups or atmosphere is good for me or not the way to recognize a company is also shown by gunadidan and swami swami says if we really want to recognize a company if we want to recognize a person then we should first observe his own behavior if a person's behavior is according to commandments of bhagwan orders of satpurus then that person definitely a good by character on the other hand if the person has no such good qualities if that person may be indulge in worldly and sensual pleasures and not lead his life according to bhagwan's agnya bhagwan's command that person is bad nature and for us that is ail company but if you may say how can we rec- how can we observe with our first meeting with that person when a person came in contact with vicious nature person one can have some monotonous in one's heart one cannot feel easy in one's heart 
on the other hand if a person is good quality virtuous person if we meet at the time our heart our own self become very joyous we can have some joy in our heart to meet while we are meeting that person there are so many things for us to observe but by observing such things it is on our part to decide whether i have to keep the company of this person or not because in every scriptures in our religious discourses there is one thing the importance of sang importance of company in the sikshapatri or in the vachanamrit also many times bhagwan himself has posed man much weight on this topic because if we are like wood means we are a virtuous person but if we tire our own self with a stone like persons means vicious person we cannot walk on the path of spirituality we cannot remain in the satsang no doubt today we cannot find much difference but after a while after some times gradually we can imbibe flows and folds in the sadhus and devotees even in the scriptures and finally in the god and in this way we drown in the water of kusam we cannot float in the clean water of the satsang and if we have a good company even though we have some bad habits in our own self we have bad natures but still we have a good company of satpurus we have a good company of satsangis means devotees and if we attach our own self if we tie our own self with rope of trust with a rope of faith so our duty is to tie our own self to such satpurus and such devotees so that we can even though we are like a stone we can easily float in the water this is what about the satsang means company also another thing is that to stay near or to live together is not a company because there are so many people in the house live together but still they are all feelings they are all thinking they are all natures everything is different on the other hand in the same house two brothers cannot live peacefully but to friends even though they are living in two different house still they have good feelings for each other this is what the company if we are remain in satsang we are listening the katha we are reading the scriptures we are doing darshan of bhagwan but still sometimes if we have no good feelings for such things means if we have no good feelings for sadhu for devotees for bhagwan for scriptures then even though we are doing mechanically all the things we are not in a good company we are not in a contact with sadhu devotees scriptures or bhagwan 
so what is the company exact meaning company means profoundly attached on our own self to the satpurush how even though we are living far from satpurush we are living far from asadu we are living far from duties but still we have not only soft corner for sadhu duties scriptures bhagwan's form but we have a loving feelings for sadhu we have affection for bhagwan's form bhagwan's murti we have affection for duties for reading the scriptures for listening katha in such situation if we are not physically in contact with sadhus or devotees or satsang still we are in contact we are in the company of good sadhu if we have a good affectionate feeling for sadhus and devotees so it is our duty to keep our own self in the satsang with affectionate feeling without affection even though sadhu may say anything about our faults our bad habits our nature we cannot understand those words of wisdom instead we may take those words of wisdom adversely and in this way we have chance to lapse from the satsang fellowship if we want to avoid such bad things will occur in our life if we want to remain firm if we want to remain float in the water of this world this material world this perishable world if we want to remain steadily in the satsang we have a chance we have a chance to understand all about the satsang in the youth sibi 2014 from 30 31 july and 1st august we have a youth sibir in new jersey the theme of the sibir is satsang this is only a little bit about satsang but if you want if you interested and if you rec- realize that the importance of company satsang and if you know if you want to know more about satsang if you want to know more about the importance of satsang and the qualities of satsang then don't forget to click on www.swaminarayan.org and just register your own name for youth sibi 2014 for more benefit for more knowledge for nor for more attachment with the sadhu and become in and becoming a stone satsangi hari krishna maharaj ni jay shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dar matmajam vasudevam hari madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swaminarayanam nilakantham bhaj hari krishna maharaj ni jay